Hey everyone, welcome back to my kitchen and welcome to a weekly meal prep. This is kind of new. I haven't done one of these in a long time. Normally I do a monthly freezer meal prep. If you are new around here, I pick certain things in different times of the month and I prep them for the whole month. So today I'm going to show you a little more of what I would get ready for the week. This does not happen every single week. Let's just be real, but this is more of the ideal situation whenever I have time to kind of get everything ready for the week. So basically I'm doing a lot of cutting up of vegetables and just getting things ready that would only last, you know, a handful of days versus something in the freezer. And I get questions a lot about fresh fruit and vegetables, especially whenever I am showing a lot of freezer meals. And yes, we do eat fresh fruits and vegetables. Obviously I don't put those in the freezer all the time, so I don't often show that part of it. So I thought I would go ahead and kind of show you how I incorporate the freezer meals along with some fresh food as well. So stick around because here in a little bit I'm going to be showing you how I incorporate the freezer meals along with the things I'm prepping today. This little thing is probably one of my most favorite purchases that I've gotten recently and it's an oil dispenser. Basically all you have to do is squeeze that little top and then you can put oil on your pan, on your cookie sheet, in your muffin tins. It basically is going to save you from having to buy a lot of cooking spray or wasting paper towels, which I love. Plus you can fill it with whatever type of oil you like to use and the bottle part is glass so I feel like it's a great quality and it comes in a couple different colors. Anyways, there's my little ramble on my Amazon find of the week. So the first thing I'm prepping up here is some Brussels sprouts and these are so great just roast it up in the oven on cookie sheets and then I'm also roasting up some sweet potatoes as well and to reheat these because that's always a question I have when I do big preps is how do you reheat things how do you cook things these here I will reheat in my air fryer but you could easily throw them in your frying pan with a little bit of olive oil and heat them up really quickly or if you have a microwave which I don't have a microwave but if you have a microwave you could always heat them up in there as well I like to use this bag method where I put all of the vegetables in the bag and of course I added some onions as well and with the oil and just kind of mix it around that way. I feel like each piece of vegetable gets coated really well whenever I mix them up in the bag like that and I just use the same bag for both of these veggies and then I topped them with a little bit of garlic powder, some salt and then I added some pepper to the sweet potatoes as well. This week I also needed some deviled eggs. That is a staple side in our house. We love them. I grew up eating them all the time, especially in the summer times and at church potlucks and things like that. So I'm just putting some eggs into the pan and getting them boiling while I was working on some other prep. All right, and then this is always my tip with the bacon. You can fry an entire pack of bacon so fast, so mess less. Just kind of weave the bacon with it going one way, one layer, and then the other way, another layer, and all of the splatters and everything is contained in your air fryer. I needed the bacon for some broccoli salad. I love broccoli salad. And the nice thing about this stuff, even if you're planning it for one meal, the leftovers work great as lunch options and things like that. And I just got this food processor. I mentioned it in my last video. It's the cheapest one Walmart has. And obviously I'm pretty new to using a food processor because I had the disc upside down and I didn't realize it. So I was actually like trying to use the slicing part on the cheese and it crumbled the cheese up and then on top of it I actually left the chopper on the inside so fix that and still got my shredded cheese I want to take a minute to thank function of beauty for sponsoring this week's video you all know that I don't share things unless I absolutely love them and I have very fine thin hair so it's very challenging for me to find products that work well for my hair but I've been loving my personalized shampoo and conditioner from function of beauty it's been a total game-changer it doesn't weigh my hair down and it makes my hair 
so silky soft. Function of Beauty walks you through a quiz to completely personalize your shampoo and conditioner. They ask you the question to make the shampoo and conditioner perfect for you. Another thing that drew me to Function of Beauty is they do not contain parabens or sulfates and they are vegan and cruelty free. These have been dermatologist tested so I know it won't irritate my scalp and you can customize even the color and the scent. Two other things that I really loved about this is they do include a pump which is super convenient and they put your name on the bottle if you choose that option. I just thought that was so unique and fun to open up the box and see my name right on the bottle. To be honest though, even without all of the aesthetics, this really does work well. It comes right to my door and I don't have to go out to the store to get it. If you click on the link in my description box, you will get 20% off your first 16 ounce custom set. I also recommend becoming a member because you get perks like free shipping. Now let's get back to cooking. Okay, so we're still prepping the broccoli salad and I just dumped the cheese in with the broccoli and now I'm getting the bacon out of the air fryer and just chopping it up into some big bacon bits. You can put as much bacon or as little bacon as you want to in this. I like a lot of bacon in it, plus it adds a little extra protein. And then I just put a few spoonfuls of mayo and a little squirt of mustard and then stir it all around. It really depends on how much broccoli you're gonna use with this. I don't use exactly measurements I just kind of have the list of ingredients and put them all together so that's how I'll leave it in the description box just with the amounts that you want to add into the salad Then at this point, my veggies were ready to get out of the oven, so I just sat them on the table to cool. And I added some ice to the eggs to get them to cool down faster. Okay, so I am actually making a roasted tomato soup because soup and cheese sandwiches are definitely a great lunch option. So I decided I'm gonna go ahead and cook up a whole pot of tomato soup so that I have it ready for lunches this week. And to be honest, I'm kind of doing some test runs on tomato soup to figure out which one is the best that I can can. I don't really want to go ahead and can a whole bunch of tomato soup and nobody likes it. So we're doing some testing and this one is really, really good. Um, it would be a little bit harder to can because it does have milk in it. So I may have to find something else to can, but either way, this is a really easy option when it comes to roasted tomato soup. So while they were roasting in the oven, I went ahead and and cut up some fresh fruit. I kind of like to pick two fruits for the week. That's just kind of the way I've done it for years. So whether it's oranges and apples or whatnot. So this week I did a pineapple and I did some kiwi. The girls are on a major kiwi kick right now. And I know this is gonna look like a lot of kiwi, but literally they can eat all of this in about two days and it really gets eaten up fast. Obviously you wouldn't wanna store this in the refrigerator very long just because kiwi doesn't do well. But because we eat it so fast, it wasn't that big of a deal. And I always look at it this way with a fruit like this They need me to cut it and peel it and I have to kind of stop what I'm doing to go do that if they want it as a snack But if it's already cut up and in the refrigerator They can just go get it out themselves and it saves me from having to kind of interrupt the task at hand I just had to get this beautiful shot of all of these delicious veggies. So now I'm going to make some homemade guacamole and I'm gonna be honest with you all, I have not made guacamole before. I've bought it a lot, but if my memory serves me right, I don't think I have ever 
made it before. Also, this little tip of pushing the back of the avocado. I only re learned recently to get the pit out. I didn't realize you can literally just push on the back of the avocado and it will pop right out. So don't hurt yourself with a knife trying to get the pit out. Just take your thumbs and press on the back of the avocado and the pit should pop right out for you. So this recipe was really, really simple and turned out really well. And you can kind of adjust some of the ingredients to your liking, but I will leave the recipe link below, of course, with all of the others. Okay, so does anyone else do this whenever you're dealing with really hot peppers like jalapenos? Um, do you put gloves on? Years ago, I canned some hot peppers and I did not use gloves. And oh my goodness, they made my skin burn so badly and it wouldn't go away. <laughs> So ever since then, I do use gloves whenever I'm cutting really hot peppers just so that I don't get it on my skin and it doesn't irritate me. I just picked up this chopper. It works really good for hamburger, but I realized that it works for a lot of other things because I also used it to mash up strawberries to make some strawberry jelly this week. And now I'm using it to mash up guacamole. So it's definitely being very used in my kitchen. Now we're going to assemble the tomato soup. So the tomatoes were done roasting. So I just dumped everything into my Dutch oven and you put some cream in it and along with some chicken bone broth. And I used a little bit of feta cheese and some salt and pepper. And then I used my immersion blender that I love. I really love this thing. If you're looking for one that is a great quality, this is a really great one. I will leave the link below. But it just blended it up and then I just stored it in some mason jars in the refrigerator. This is another snack that if I have on hand, my daughters will eat so much and that is cucumbers. And if I just have them cut up in the refrigerator, they will eat these things like potato chips. They love them. I like them, but I think they definitely love them more than I do. So now we're going to get started on the deviled eggs, but I have to make a comment. This day was so absolutely beautiful and I felt like this beautiful sunlight coming in that you're going to see across the next couple of clips was such a wonderful reward that God was just giving me a little bit of sunshine to end all of this hard work and when I was finished with this meal prep I went out and sat on the porch with a drink and just soaked in the vitamin D. If you live in a place that's cold you totally understand this. This is probably one of the warmest days that we've had so far and the sunshine this afternoon sunshine was just beautiful sometimes whenever I film it can be really bright and I'll move out of the sunshine but this day I was like I have to share these rays of light for all of my northern subscribers that are missing the sunshine as well and deviled eggs often make me think of summer and picnics and all of that so all of it together was just perfect so the other thing I like to do whenever I'm finished making my deviled eggs which I just use a little mayo and mustard in with the yolk is I like to sprinkle them with paprika however I was out this day so I just use a little chili powder the next thing that I put together was some overnight oats and this is so simple and I forget about it a lot of times but all I did was shake a little bit of oats into each container and then I did use regular sugar. You can use any kind of sweetener you want to. You could even use honey or maple syrup and then you can top it with anything that you want. I used some bananas and some blueberries and then I try to kind of guess but you want about one part oatmeal to two parts milk and you just let them sit overnight and they're ready to go. The nice thing about these is they do have a couple days that you can leave them in the refrigerator and they're a nice grab and go breakfast for anyone in the house.
Okay, so I wanted to show you my plan for this week and how I will use my freezer meals along with the weekly meal prep I just did. On Monday, we're gonna have steaks with sliced potatoes and I'll just do those fresh and soak them. And then we can have some of the carrots that I'm canning right now. Tuesday, we will have barbecue meatballs, mashed potatoes, and peas, and that is a freezer meal. Wednesday, we will have sour cream, chicken enchiladas, and chips with the guac, and that is a freezer meal as well. Thursday, we will have roast beef with the sweet potatoes and peas and the roast beef is really simple I can just pull that out of the freezer then on Friday we'll have the lemon pepper chicken which is also a freezer meal with baked beans and coleslaw that I'll just make that day Saturday we'll have burgers with the broccoli salad that I prepped today and some potato chips Sunday we'll have pulled pork sandwiches which is a freezer meal carrots and pickled eggs which I'm actually boiling the eggs for the pickled eggs right now to put in with the pickled beets. And then here's all of my extras. So I did pineapple, kiwi, cucumbers, deviled eggs, overnight oats, and then tomato soup to fill in for lunches. All right, so I told you all the other day on Instagram that I'm going to start including what I'm canning every week um, at the end of my video every week. I know it's not everybody's thing to do long-term food storage and things like that, but this is what I'm working on. And so I figured I will just explain what I'm doing. And obviously if this isn't your thing, you can click out. But what I'm working on today while I've been prepping for the week is canning some carrots. And honestly, with this being the first thing that I'm showing you how to can, um, it's a great starter because it's truly so, so simple. And I have to give a little disclaimer. This is how I'm doing this. It doesn't mean it's the most recommended or safest way to do this. I always have to give a disclaimer with this kind of stuff because some people have their methods that they feel they need to do. I'm not pressure canning these, but this is how like even my mother-in-law has canned carrots for years. So check with your grandmothers. They may be able to give you some tips that may not be by the book, but this is how I'm doing it. So First of all, I'm just doing baby carrots. It saves me time on cutting up carrots. You can do regular carrots as long as they're all around the same size. It doesn't really matter, but this is just fast and simple. So you cold pack the jars um, with the cold carrots or, you know, just raw carrot. Then you're gonna add around a teaspoon of salt to each jar. Now, I think it's a little bit tastier to have a little less than a teaspoon per jar but that's up to you. You can do one batch, taste them, and see what you think. These are my magnets for my lids back here. I just stuck them to the side of the stove. So after I have all of my carrots in here, I'm going to wipe the rims. These are clean, sterile jars. I just washed them in very, very hot water and put them over here. I have my lids back here in this pot boiling so they're getting sterilized and then I have purified water in here that's getting hot. The next step will be to ladle in the really hot water that is in here and once they are up here and have about an inch of headspace I will add my lids and screw on my rings back there and then I will put them over here in my canner if you hear something hissing that's what's going on this is getting to a boiling point and um, so it's all very very hot. I do have some carrots over here that I just pulled out. Oh, that's hot. Um, and so I will let them sit for a couple hours to make sure that they seal really, really well and obviously test the seals and then I'll take the rings off, label them, and they will be ready for storage. And then right here is my labels. I will link them below. They are from Amazon and I actually get them in huge packs, but they're great because they dissolve right off the jar when you go to wash the jar. So you don't have any sticky stuff on your jar. Plus they're very simple to write on with just a regular pen. We had some popcorn last night, so it's over here, but this is how the carrots look whenever they're done. They are super, super simple and they can keep for, you know, a year. Um, depending, you may want to do a little research on how long you want to store yours. Um, I do have to show you this because I just got it today in the mail from Amazon, but it's a butter dish and it says butter all the things on it. And it's great because you can keep soft butter right by the stove to put in the frying pan or on top of butter bread. So anyways, this is the finished product. I'm gonna go ahead and load up my next batch. So one more thing, I do process these for three hours in my water bath canner. This is just from Walmart, super cheap canner. Um, and I will leave the link for it below. Again, you can do your own research and decide how long you want to can them for, but three hours is what I do for these.
I hope that this video was a total inspiration to you. Let me know in the comments if you do canning or if you're liking this content of canning or doing freezing and that kind of thing for long-term storage. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you're new and I will see you all in my next video.